Nah, girl. We going. Okay. That's awkward to start like that. I mean, you, you gonna edit went this with me. You're going to edit this out. Yeah. No, I'm not. Hey, no, guys. Not. What's up? What's up? It's your girl, Triple F Queen Bola in the his house. No tagline. Whitney up on her. And we are Blurred Talk with Bola and Whitney. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hello sounded, there. That sounded very southern. <laughs> I know. I tried that one. <laughs> oh man. Hi guys. How are you all doing on the springy, springy day? Yes. I don't know about you, boat. but I was enjoying the weather. It's a very nice day today, you oh guys. My God, it's it was beautiful fantastic. and wonderful, and my allergies are not killing me. Yes. I hope you caught the this air. Like really, guys. I hope you really did. I don't know where you are listening to this, but. In Richmond, VA, it was really, really nice this weekend. It was beautiful. A beautiful. sunny day, lovely day, lovely day, oh, lovely, lovely day. day. Yes, it's lovely sunny. Day. Lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely, lovely day. day. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's so funny? I did not know that that song was so old because the first time I heard Lovely Day was the Frank, the Kirk Franklin version. Kirk so, Franklin did a version? Yeah, huh. that's the first one. We did it, and you know when I heard it, we did it, we, we did a dance to it for our, my, our fifth grade graduation. Huh. So that was the first time I ever heard that song, Lovely Day. So this whole time I thought this was a Christian song because I knew Kirk Franklin mm-hmm. sang about Jesus. Because, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> can I get a witness? Oh, yeah. We got the church ain't going nowhere. Do you want a revolution? Woo, woo. I said, do you want a revolution? Woo, woo. Exactly. <laughs> so I was like, I knew that Kirk Franklin. And then when I heard that we were doing another Kirk Franklin song, and it was a lovely day, we just, I remember the dance. Huh? We were stomping and everything. So I always thought this was a Kirk Franklin song. <laughs> then I hear these old versions, and I'm just like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He sampled that mess. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. It's I amazing how many songs <laughs> that you listen to today, and then you hear, like, the how heavily they've been sent. Not not always mm-hmm. heavily, but, or like, covered. Mm-hmm. covered or sampled. And you're like, yeah. Just so much stuff. Mm-hmm. Or you just didn't even know that somebody sang this earlier. Like someone else right. originate, originated the yeah. song. But not the way of, you heard kind it. of like a, uh, jumping off from what you were talking about with Kurt Franklin. A belated happy Resurrection Sunday to you guys. Oh, yeah. Jesus Day. Hope you all had a wonderful Easter. Yes, it was fantastic. I had way too much food. <laughs> way too much. I mean, if y'all saw the smorgasbord, I mean, we had a whole spread. And it I was, was so good. I was at uh, my sister-in-law's sister's family's house. <laughs> so Tiffany's um, mm-hmm. sister's family's house. But um, I mentioned that because I, I usually manage to watch... Um, the Bible is that what it's called, or is it called Moses? You know the, the one, one with Charlton and Heston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's on, what, what is that one called? I think that one is called um, the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. I usually watch the Ten Commandments on Easter and or Ben Hur, and I did not watch. You know, I didn't do that last year either. But that used to be kind of like a thing, like a ritual like, thing. Yeah, that every tradition. time we would, you know. My mom watched the Bible thing because she's used to watching those things. Because mm-hmm. she don't normally watch the Bible because she watched too much damn Korean shows. <laughs> Y'all, it's a problem. Help me out. Anyway, but um, I'm not going to help you out, girl, because one of these episodes, we're going to do a, a Korean right. series or a movie. She, she watches like the Korean, like ver, ver, um, the variety TV shows, that oh, are, like reality, okay. but like game shows. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She watches one in particular called Running Man that is just like, it's good, but it's like, it's been on for years and she will watch once she's already watched it. I'm like, mom, let's watch something else because there's a plethora of new things to watch on TV, <laughs> even c- including actual Korean dramas that you can just get into. She would be like, nah, I want to watch Running Man. And I'm like, what the <laughs> F? You know? And so I just laugh at that. But she usually watches, uh, at least on Easter, the Bible story of something of Jesus mm. on those channels. But I don't think she's been watching her Christian channels anymore since all the Trump stuff went down. So she stopped watching. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> she stopped watching those things. But she did watch one. But I remember I used to watch that all the time, too. Mm-hmm. Um, or one of the Bible stories or something. It's a good, those are it, both those good movies. Ones. And I've never ben seen Ben-Hur. I've always wanted to watch that huh. one. That's a classic. Yeah, but I love the Ten Commandments, but with, with um, Charlton Heston. And yeah, Moses. it's really good. I actually love that one. And You know what? I should start, you know, I, I didn't think about it this year. Next year... I should have us all watch The Prince of Egypt. 
so that the that. little ones can't. No, I'm talking about like for my family, family? Oh. so that the so that Peanut and Eli. Is it from the musical one? Yeah. Oh, that one's good. Many nights we pray. Yeah, that one's a good one. With no hope anyone could feel, and our hearts a hopeful song we barely understood. Now we are not I don't know afraid, all the words, so I'm just going to let you sing it. Although we know there's much to fear, we were moving mountains long before we knew we could. You, what's the chorus? The chorus? There can be miracles ah, if Will you, you believe. believe. Though hope, hope is frail, it's hard to kill. Who knows what miracles you can achieve, you can achieve when you believe, somehow you will, you will when you believe. <laughs> yeah, look at that, it's coming in there with some Whitney and Mariah I was vibes. trying to remember, I remember that, because I was like, I always forget how that song starts, so I, I did not know all the words, but I rem- I recognized it as soon as you started singing, mm-hmm. but I was like, that's a good song. Like, it is an awesome song, so yeah. good. And then, I'm not going to lie, I showed my kids, uh, my Sunday school, I teach Sunday school, so I, sh- I showed my kids the Joseph one. You know what, Sounds I don't know if good. I ever saw that one. That one, I think, is on Netflix. I mean, I mean, I'm sure it's somewhere. I just never looked at it. I guess I wasn't as interested like in watching it. I like Joseph's story, though. I like Joseph's good. story, but I just wasn't interested in the movie when that oh, came okay. out. Speaking of movies I was not interested in. No, actually, this is the opposite. I was really interested in the movie, and then it was <laughs> like, what is this? What's that movie that came out years ago? And I think it was like Russell Crowe. It was. It was. Are you talking it about Noah? Noah? The Noah, the Russell Crowe version of Noah. Yeah, I it was, was like, so awful. What is this? What am I? I was watching? like, even Jesus looked at that and was like, mm, What are they doing? <laughs> like, what am I? Where watching are these rock here? people coming from? What? It, it was the wor- the weirdest, stupidest, and I was so mad at Emma Watson for being in that. I was like, she was like the one wife, the one like daughter or at least daughter-in-law for one of the kids i was like don't you have three where are the other two chicks at <laughs> it was weird Speaking i didn't of, like it at all i want to do a jump off from that for what i'm blurting out about all right let's get into blur it out everybody blur, blur it out, out. Bum, 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 blur it out, out. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> all right whitney's going first all right so if i already mentioned this my bad you guys know i have a goldfish memory um but I am blurting out about seeing this at the Altria Theater, Mm. which is Fiddler on the Roof. Oh, cool. Yeah, so, you know, it's about a Jewish family. And I think it's in, like, the Soviet Union before it was, like, Russia or whatever. I thought you talked about this last time. I might have. If I did, my bad. Anyway, I got more than one, so... If I did, I've got another one to follow it up with you guys. I think you remember this. I think you talked about this last time. Okay, okay, cool. Um, So I'm also blurting out about... Now, did I talk about The Last Kingdom? Yeah. Okay. No. That was wow. both of your blurred out for last episode. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I don't think I talked about Big Bang Theory. No. <laughs> okay. No, you have not. All right. I have gotten really into Big Bang Theory, you guys. Really? I started. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm just it's joking complete, with you. The whole series is over, but I never got into it when it was actually on TV. But like maybe a month ago, I started watching it. I'm already it's on season six. It? I love it. It it's is. Hilarious. It is hilarious. Oh my gosh. Show. <laughs> Sheldon's a hot mess. And I love Amy Farrah Fowler because she is so, like, just thirsty for Sheldon. And Sheldon is so oblivious. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> sad When she was for her. sick and he had to, like, rub the vapor rub and she's, like, pretended to be sick for longer because she wanted him to keep on, like, actually get some, t- like, some actual contact. Oh, man, making a girl wait. And she's a pretty girl, too. So I was she like, is pretty. I and I'm like, like, what are you doing with Sheldon, Sheldon of all nobody people? Nobody else will ever put up with you. No one. He's impossible. Like, <laughs> I cannot. It was. It's. It, I, I love the show. So yeah, that's what I'm blurting out about right now. Um, I think that's it for me right now. Oh, these. Um, this place called Toys That Teach because. Um, What's that? It's a store. It's like a small business um, that sm- that sells like you know kids' toys. Not all of them mm. are kids' toys. Mm. Things that I'm interested in. Maybe they're still for kids. But anyway, anyway. Um, so for Easter, well, I bought them to give to Peanut and Eli for Easter, but I actually bought them like two months ago. Mm. Um, 
and there are these like airplanes. They're like these foam airplanes. You put them together almost like the um the little wood slash papery things. Mm-hmm. Like they're just the model planes, but not like the Yeah, hard, hard just course. ones where you Simple like just put it together ones. and you can throw them and they, you know, mm-hmm. they like on them. Yeah, yeah. But they also have LED lights. Mm. So I got a green one and a red one. So mm. I gave it to my nephews for Easter, and they freaking loved, loved it. It, oh, it so went nice. off like a house on fire. I was so happy with how much they loved those things. Oh, that's so <laughs> lovely. I know. So that's what I'm blurting out about lovely. right now. It's always nice when the, the nieces and the nephews. It's funny, you have nephews, and I only have nieces. <laughs> I know. Um, like, so I only deal with the girls. I have no idea about boys anymore. <laughs> like, in more ways than one. Oh, my God. I saw a picture of... Mm-hmm. Uh, Go ahead. Of Doeen <laughs> on, like, Facebook the other day. He's I was like, like a what young man now. in the world has he's happened? He's, like, the only one. My little, that's, he's talking like, about my little cousin. What young. has happened? I remember him was he when he was a wee thing. He's a little grown thing. Heartbreaker for all the ladies at school, <laughs> college right now. If I had to check him and be like, no girls right now. <laughs> <laughs> but they come for him because he's handsome. He is handsome. My, my, my boy's handsome. But it's handsome. just and so he, gyms crazy. Out. he goes to the gym all the time now. He's like it bumping up. makes me up. feel old. Yes, it does. Because I was like, flex. And he flexed. And I was like, oh, my God, your bicep. <laughs> this was not here like months ago. <laughs> so I remember really when he was work. little and he called me on your phone. <laughs> I know. I can't believe he did that. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Miss Wendy. I'm like, hi. Totally. I can't believe he did that in me. Does Boa know you have her phone? I did not. I still, I'm like, I'm, I, I did not know at all until you told me like years later. Anyway, it's hilarious. <laughs> he still remembers all my friends that I introduced him to. That he was in love with Nikki, one of my high school friends, and then you as well. And I was like, oh my God. But he was a cutie pie. He's still a yes, great, he's a yes. great young man. Um, okay. So blurting out about a couple things, um, and I'm gonna keep them short and sweet though. Um, I've been watching. Um, so I used to like all the black uh, sitcoms that were on UPN mm-hmm. back in the day. I remember watching. If I didn't complete the series, I watched a lot of the episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, except for this one called Half and Half. And so I finally like almost completed Half and Half. But this, honestly, I fell asleep. So my family ended up watching the last season. So I ended up watching the end of the season without watching some of the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love the show Half and Half. It's one of the ones that was on after the Parkers and One on One and UPN. I mean, and the Game and um, Moesha, all those kind of shows. Mm. But it was just a rem- the show ends on a cliffhanger, and then there's no more. And I've been finding that every time I watch these shows, I like rewatch them. Like mm-hmm. I rewatched the the Girlfriends, which ended abruptly oh and then this one it's because the, at back in those days they used to just cancel without telling the, the production um the, the production basically they would not let them know so they plan their shows thinking that oh we're gonna get picked up for another season mm-hmm. so we can end this story and make it incomplete mm-hmm. and then they just be like oh no we're not picking you guys up at all your, your show's done and then you have this sh- awesome show that you love and then it's like there's nothing the story is not complete you're not satisfied and you're pissed off and in the case of girlfriends they ended right in the middle of the season where because of the writer strike and then they just oh. they could not even go on with the story so you are definitely unsatisfied with girlfriends and I'm just like, why haven't they gone back to this and fixed it? So it was just like mad because I really enjoyed them. Me and my family always laughed for these mm-hmm. black shows back in those days, the early the aughts, the early 2000s. <laughs> I like that word, yeah. Um, and so it was just like we were just all livid, like in the house. We just like, <laughs> I can't believe it's home. Who did she pick? Blah, 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 blah. It was hilarious. That's what fan fiction is for. <laughs> I know, I know. We might have to go and see if there is any half and half. Um, fan fiction, but I mean, no shows are so nostalgic for the time period. Too. Yeah. Uh, cause that was our time period. You know, I was like fully like a teenager, mm-hmm. middle schooler, teenager doing those times. So I was always paying attention to a lot of stuff. I remember all the style, everything. And so it's just like, as much as I love that these, all these shows like sister, sister, all this stuff got picked up and put on Netflix. It just like made me sad for like how they couldn't finish their stories. Like oh, now yeah. you can at least be like, we plan every season to be like, you know? Yeah. 
and we'll wait and see, you know? So it's just kind of like, man, you go through the 20 something episodes and it's just, this show's so great. You just like, you want it to end satisfyingly, you yeah, know? And it yeah. can't, and it never will. And you're just like, dang it. <sighs> not. And my sister got pissed off like at me. Game of Thrones. Oh, well, that one was, um, let's not talk about Game of Thrones. I'm going to get upset. <laughs> um, another thing on the opposite end is like these new shows that I'm really loving. Mm-hmm. One of them is Blackish. The other one is um, This Is Us. And these are shows that have been so popular mm-hmm. and beloved and they've been on for several seasons, several years. Mm-hmm. And they are now coming to an end this season. Oh. And I I'm know. like... Well, I know about Blackish. Feelings. I didn't know This Is Us was ending this season yeah, as well. Yeah, This Is Us is ending this season. And mm-hmm. funny enough, I got my family to finally watch This Is Us. But they watched the end. They watched only the last season with me. <laughs> but um, we've been enjoying it together as a family, mm-hmm. both episodes. And we were watching... We thought the last episode of... of um, of This Is Us was on this weekend, was on this week, excuse mm-hmm. me, but it wasn't. So I think there's going to be at least another one or two more mm-hmm. because they do always 18 episodes. So this was this week was like 13, so mm-hmm. I think there's going to be more. But um, watching the end of Blackish was just like kind of bittersweet because they just ended it the blackest way possible. They did like one of those homegoing uh, parades in the middle of the street where they, where they filmed the show Blackish. Everyone was wearing black and they had like a white casket. And they were like had a band, and then there was like a bunch of people you could just see like you know it was like the people that worked on the show, mm-hmm. people that have been on the show as guests, whatever. And they just kind of went through and just danced to like this New Orleans style band. That's you know, pretty cool. They had pallbearers that were like dancing. <laughs> that actually sounds really. It, it was cool. a wonderful ending celebration because it's like they just wanted to send it off on a happy note. Because I was just like, but it was yeah, still you like, bittersweet. You don't want to speaking. Of, <laughs> sorry to to tie it back in like. um on a recent episode, not a recent episode because it's not on air anymore, but a recent episode that I watched of Big Bang Theory, they were talking about different shows that ended like abruptly because mm-hmm. Sheldon was upset that this sci-fi show called Alphas ended on a cliff note oh, no. and got canceled. Yeah. And they were talking about other shows and it's, and I forget one of all of the shows that they mentioned, but it was like, or like Heroes, where they just made each season progressively worse until you hoped that they canceled it. Oh, yeah. Heroes didn't, and they didn't go a great place with that. When they brought back Heroes Reborn, I was excited, and then I was just kind of like... I don't I think felt, I watched that. I felt like, I don't know, I kind of was ambivalent about Heroes Reborn, but I was like, I kind of wish that maybe they had done away. something. Oh. Like, it was, it was intriguing, kind of. Was it the same people, or they just did other people? So, some of the same people. Not everyone. Claire wasn't in there. They had it where it was, like, her kids. Like, where she died having her kids. Oh, wow. Yeah. But she's got the healing power. How did she die? So, her son got, like, a power similar to, like, Peter. So, he Mm -hmm. absorbed Mm -hmm. her her power. Dang. Yeah. So, it 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 was interesting. It wasn't awesome but it was like okay this is mm. no I'm, i think i remember watching it now that you say it i, I don't think i finished watching it i remember because like one of the kids in there was like i think freddie highmore or something he was in there who what's he from he's he now plays the good doctor as a grown man but he was a kid back then uh, so he was in there i think right um, I know that the kid, the kid in there the thing that i recognize him from is he played peter pan in once upon a time Oh, that was him then. That wasn't Peter. They're both like they're both like skinny, small yeah, yeah. British kids. It wasn't Freddie Highmore. I don't okay. know who that yeah, kid I is, but you're I right. I didn't think so because I was like, I've seen the Good right. Doctor, and I'm I like, knew I it was somebody it was like him, but right? The, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so that it was him. Funny in there. enough, Freddie Highmore when he was a kid was in Finding Neverland, which was about J. Um, J. M. Barry. That's funny. So it's like they both were in Peter Pan productions, but whatever. I never actually saw Finding Neverland. Is oh that good? God, it was really good. It mm. had um. J- um, Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp, Kate Winslet, yeah, oh, Kate really Winslet, huh. yeah. Okay, but those. But yeah, my the, point was that at least it ended on a high note because you, you know, mm-hmm. it, sometimes shows. Did you ever watch Revenge? Yeah, and I just didn't. I fell off of it though. You fell off. It I watched well. it all the way to the end, which it actually did have like a satisfying ending. But it was at one. It was at the point where you're like. They well, I better finish this thing exactly. Because otherwise exactly. This is going to go it, left. This is, exactly. This How is much like, revenge you, can you get? Exactly. It's like You're this is getting ridiculous. Back from the dead and all this other right stuff. Now. And I'm so just like, y'all wow. need to cut. And they did. And I'm like, thank 
you. This made sense to like stop it now. Yeah. So honestly, as much as I'm like, this is us could have gone on so much longer than it has. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how are you only going to do six seasons? That show makes you cry every episode. Like every episode is waterworks. They probably wanted to keep the magic. No, and I agree because I rather, rather have something good and solid Mm -hmm. than to have extra extra and it's be shitty you know what i mean i really <laughs> don't like that like right where right. i have to force myself to be like you know what i'm gonna just withdraw or stop watching this or where you recommend something to someone but you tell them like oh watch um, season one but you know you can stop like game of thrones I, like, <laughs> don't watch the last season you will be utterly utterly devastated yeah it's like just stop at that point yeah so i was um blurting out about that and then also, just the new movie trailers are coming out. Like Ooh. Marvel, you guys know I'm a Marvel girl. I Me love too. my Marvel League. We're both Marvel girls, and I'm excited for. I've seen the trail. Well, we've seen like Multiverse Multiple. of Madness, <laughs> but Multiverse of Madness is going to be coming out very soon. Oh my god, but I'm so excited! This week we also got the Thor: Love and Thunder. I haven't seen the the trailer, trailer yet. Oh my god, it's so good! I cannot you know what? wait. We'll put, it, we'll put it in the show notes, you guys. A I link to the video because I haven't seen it yet. It's so good i saw it on instagram earlier this week and i was like flipping out i literally like had it playing while i was on the phone (laughs) i had like a work thing but i was like oh i was watching that (laughs) i was watching that real quick and then i was like oh i have work stuff but then i was like but i really want to watch this one more time (laughs) so but it was really good so i'm excited for the marvel marvel universe uh, I haven't watched Moon Knight yet, but I'm just like you. I'm going to wait for it to finish. Yeah, altogether. so that I can binge watch it. Yeah, I feel like I'm just going to let it breathe. Also, I heard Morbius <laughs> like was bad, wine. y'all. Yeah, I heard the same so, thing. I mean, I didn't want to watch Morbius, but I heard it was bad. I originally wanted to see it, but now I'm like, since I heard it's bad, I'm like, I'll just wait till it comes to something streaming. The problem or I is so many people were talking about it, how bad it was. I was oh, like, wow. It was on Saturday Night Live. Trevor Noah was talking about it. I All feel the like, late night hosts were talking about how bad it was. I, I was feel like, like when it comes to streaming, um, to one of the streaming platforms, we should watch it and review it. I don't know. I never wanted to watch more movies. It looks scary. Remember I, I told you it was creepy it's like, to me? It's like Blade, though. Blade's not. I wouldn't call Blade scary. I never scary. watched Blade. Really? Yep. I actually, I think the Blade Trinity is actually really good. Was it three? Yep. Oh, wow. The, actually, I think the third one is actually called Blade Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> you said Blade up. Trinity, but you mean trilogy. I think maybe that's what you meant to say. Blade Trilogy. Yeah, the Trilogy. But I think it was called Blade Trinity. Let me look it up before some person comes at me. All right. So she's while she's getting that, I'm going to like preface our episode feature for today what? what we are going to be talking about a uh, action comedy y'all something that we haven't action done comedy romance kind of i think romance was in last place. okay action rom-com Let's yeah, do that. yeah yeah there we go three movies in one although rom-com is kind of like its own it's kind of like a two for anyway mm-hmm. nobody does purely romantic movies now where there's always like well, comedy in them or I feel like action. Or somebody something. probably does it. Probably the British, maybe. Yeah, you you, you know what? The, they do. Those Bridgerton was like a purely romantic. Yeah, TV show, that's and I true. love that. I, Y'all need to watch Bridgerton see. season two. Don't screw what everyone don't, else don't, says. Don't, just don't, watch don't it. spoil it for me. I still haven't finished it. No, I'm just telling y'all to go out and watch it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm actually looking forward to um, the spinoff. I'm interested to see With how Queen Charlotte. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised how they're gonna do that. So we'll see. I'm surprised they're even doing a spinoff. Well, I mean, it's so popular that people mm-hmm. are like I, um, people will watch it just to check it. I'd be like, what? What y'all gonna be doing about the queen? Yeah, what's going it's, on? Her it's little an interesting life? Um, mm-hmm. premise. I, I was right. See what's Blade going Trinity, on with her yeah. and how the King George issue and cause you know the, the the king is mad. Well, I mean, <sighs> I don't think I don't think he's mad. I think he's got dementia. No, I mean like they call him the Mad King because they didn't have those words back then. So <laughs> like he's actually just Thrones? the madness of King George. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, it's like that's what they call it, madness. Like they don't even know. Cause well, I, I mean, I know they call it madness, but they actually call, in the series they call him the Mad King. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's funny. Mm-hmm. I mean, not funny, but no, like it, in it, history, it, he was known as the Mad King. So in history, in history books, like Charlotte, the for, in Bridgerton. The Queen Charlotte is based off of an actual Queen Charlotte. Oh, she was married to King George, who was actually mad. Yeah, 
I mm-hmm. had no idea. You see, girl, you that's because I love British period pieces. I know way more than I should about British stuff, <laughs> but <laughs> but I just because I grew up loving that period. But I just like them. I can't explain it. Mm. I just love them. So I know the histories behind some of it. Um, not all the I don't know all the the um, the regents and I don't know all the the majesties and the lines. Everything it's, about it's the tongue. Much. I I, know, I wonder I like where that, that word, term the tongue, comes yeah. from. The tongue. I do, yeah. I wonder. I don't, I don't know what it's. I thought it was because it's a ton of people. Get it? <laughs> but that's a bad joke. Sorry. I don't know where it comes from either. So we'll have to see where it comes from. The ton. Mm. But I like the name. For, yeah, for all it's the, interesting. The society. And the funny thing is, I've never heard it until Bridgerton. So yeah, I'm wondering, did I miss I. it in some of those other shows I've watched? Or I've maybe watched they a bunch just of like a really esoteric term. That, yeah. 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 Look at us. We're blurting out about like British <laughs> British history and film. Like, anyway, let's get to what we're talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Lost City of. Wait. No, you're thinking about the book title? I know. Like, <laughs> You're, you're going like very meta. You're going I in, am, in, in, I in. Am. Okay. The movie is The Lost City with hey. Sandra Bullock and Channing yeah. Tatum and Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah. And then I'm what's dancing, the other, y'all. And what's the lady's name? Uh, Dava, Divine. Divine. D- Divine. Joyce. Somebody. Joy something. Mm. But yeah, you guys, it is, <laughs> it's a fun movie. It's super fun. Like, first of all, let me just, let's just talk real quick about how like, I miss the this kind of um, comedy. Mm-hmm. I miss this kind of because it seems like now everybody just wants to do the sure thing, the darkness. The there has to be like a thriller or a superhero movie. I mean, I do like thrillers and superhero movies, but I love the the comedy. Like before, there was way more romantic com- romantic comedies or just pure comedies that were just like silly movies that were like blockbuster hits. But now it's like though, less and less. I uh, was uh, not as much ever into as far as I seeing was. it in theater. I liked them, but I would see them like when they came out on like video or streaming. I understand, or whatnot. I understand. But this is one of the ones where, you know, I saw, and I guess maybe it's just because I love Sandra Bullock so much. Yeah. And she could do a good rom-com. Like, exactly. The proposal is like one of my favorite Oh my movies. God. I love the proposal. I could watch that again. And I think that's what sold it for me. I was like, yes, I will see this in theaters because it's got Sandra Bullock and she will not let me down. Both of the congeniality movies were good. Oh yeah. <laughs> First one's better, but the, they were both good. You know what? I just saw that in, um, sorry to bounce back and forth, but like. Regina King is in Big Bang Theory. Yeah, she is. <laughs> and that's so funny because she's like a she's like a HR person, <laughs> and Sheldon gets in trouble <laughs> and has to go see her, and then to apologize because one of his friends tells her tells him that he like said something inappropriate. So he's like, "I have a gift for you," and he gives her roots. Oh my god! The box set. <laughs> you got to be kidding me! He did not do <laughs> he that. Did. I would, she was I like, you need, to, "You need to leave, leave that. my office right now." <laughs> oh my gosh! And he was like, "She was like, why did you think this was an appropriate gift?" And you can see him looking really puzzled. He's looking kind of side to side. And he's like, and then he kind of like leans and he's like, "You are black, right?" Oh my god! <laughs> It was hilarious. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, I know what he it was. To go. He was trying to get tenure. Like all of them, all of the friends are competing for a tenured position at the mm-hmm. university. So they're trying to suck up to the committee, and she's one of the people on the committee. And then after he gets kicked out of her office with, uh, after trying to give her roots, he was like, "Now to go see Doctor." And I can't remember. It was like an Asian name. It was like to give him the complete works of Jackie Chan. And I'm oh like, Sheldon, god. you Sheldon, please <laughs> just don't. <laughs> Oh, that's so, like, in a, oh, my God. It's I just can't. so funny how, like, not in tune to, like, societal cues. He's just not. He he's not. The privilege of this, uh, the white man. That's what it is. <laughs> well, oh, Sheldon's yeah. a special case. I feel like Sheldon's probably on the spectrum. Yeah, I believe so. He must be. He must be. Because he does not get any social cues. At all. And when his girlfriend is obviously, he, it just goes right over his yeah, head. Yeah, it's crazy. But actually, honestly, I, when you said Regina King, I still feel like really bad be- for her because of what happened um, earlier this year. Remember, did you hear about her? I'm not sure. What happened? Oh, her son committed suicide. Oh, I did hear about that. And that yeah, was her that only was... child. Oh, my God. And it was so bad. And that just... is just 
devastating. Because you said Regina King, but I was just like, man, that woman, I love seeing her, but she, normally we were probably seeing something by with her by now. But And she's like she's blowing not, up lately, yeah, Right now, too. she is not anywhere, and I don't and that her. that makes sense. That makes sense, but I'm just, I'm so sad. She's so talented. I mean, I'm... I'm still her loving her. Her acting, too. So. Oh, man. I, I, I loved her from, um, especially in Watchmen, the series. And then also, The Harder They Fall. She, yes, she's amazing. She was blown up. That's why I was like, we should have seen something with Regina King Like, her star now. was, like, really taking off. But her, her son, she's out. she's just out. And that makes sense. I and mean, I don't I blame know, her. And I, I just know. feel like, just send the prayers for her as well. Yeah. So many things are going on in the world, but we're not going to talk about that. Let's get back to the show, actually. Yes. And try to finish. <laughs> talk about the show. Back to your regularly scheduled I program. know. <laughs> yes. Um, so the Lost City. So I love comedies. I really do. Like, I mean, I used to love, like, um, the Austin Power series. Oh, my God. The, I love Austin Power. Yes. And do I like, make you horny, buddy? Yes. Do I? Carrey do movies. I? All these just like pure comedies, and they used to be Smoking. amazing. Thank you. <laughs> they just used to be so fun and amazing, and you'd be like, "Yeah, you this know is what? what it's about." When but you they don't do movies those like that, it does make me realize I hadn't realized until you mentioned these are just pure comedies. Yeah, that, yeah, we. I feel like there really haven't been as many. They of don't those make. Type they don't want to make as much chance because they feel like people don't want those anymore. And they're like, oh, yeah, whatever. It's not, but it's not like the epics. Mm. Because, and I'm not going to lie, my sister hates this, um, but she said Jennifer Aniston had said, she's not the only Hollywood celebrity that has said this, or Hollywood director or whatever mm-hmm. that has said this, but she's, she's not a director. But there are other people in Hollywood that have said this, mm-hmm. that, that they believe that the superhero movies are ruining film. Hmm. And I was like, now why the hell would she say something like stupid as that? They're like, really good quality some of them not if you talk about dc then i can understand <laughs> but um marvel is doing awesome amazing wonderful things with what they're doing with their storyline yeah, they don't they put out great crap stories, you know. i mean i would agree part. if it was just like film after film that was just like crap but they I mean, have great fast character furious, development like, let's talk about great that storylines why like... are there so many fast and furious <laughs> like how now, fast granted, and furious are we gonna be I mean, I, I I am skeptical about Fast and Furious with there being nine of them. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I haven't seen all one. of them. So I'm like, who knows? Maybe they are I decent. saw seven randomly after a while. You know what's funny? I watched one. Then I watched Tokyo Drift. Didn't see a damn one in between. And then I saw seven. <laughs> <laughs> seven was actually good. But when you're trying to like push the car into space, that's what I heard happen in nine. And I was like, come on. That's, Get that's my like, face with that. That's breaking like. I, I cannot you know, I suspend my disbelief space. for that one, I don't think. I was like, come on. But people are loving it still. You know, and I was just was like, I don't, I oh, don't know about that. Oh, speaking of that, I'm sorry. I, I've got to... Go I back to what you were saying. I'm sorry. No, no, no. This is actually getting slightly off topic. But when you mentioned space, it made me think of how... Peanut recently told me that his favorite series is Power Rangers. And I was like, oh, yes. my God. And I'm like, which Power Rangers, Peanut? Because there's Power Rangers. There's Power Rangers Turbo, Power Rangers Ninja, Ninja Storm, Storm, Power Rangers in Space. space yep. And then a whole bunch of ones that I choose not to acknowledge. <laughs> All the New Zealand ones. <laughs> and he was like, and I started singing. He was like, I even know the song. And I started singing the song. And then he gave me this look. And he's like, that's not it. Which one was that? I sung the original, the oh, one, the so only one that matters. So. Sa ya 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 ya. Oh, go go, go Power Rangers! Go go Power Rangers! Go go Power Rangers! You mighty Morphin Power Rangers! <laughs> <laughs> And he gave me this look. Like, like it was a very, no. like, he's like, that's not no. it. <laughs> I yeah. was like, well, that's the one from the original. <laughs> I know. I understand what you're talking about. Because I was, remember I told you we watched The Proud Family. Me, like, me and my nieces, we watched The New Proud Family together. Mm-hmm. And so it's, like, a thing we do. And so whenever there's a new episode, we're, like, always together. And then we do not like the new song that mm-hmm. they use for The New Proud Family. Mm-hmm. The one with Beyonce and Solange, I mean, well, let's just say Destiny Child and Solange is way better. And so the the girls um watching it this week, they're mm-hmm. like, Auntie, let's let's watch the original one. 
let's see what the original one look like. Mm-hmm. And they went back and they, they actually loved the original song, mm. but they didn't like the original show. They're like, oh, okay. what's up this drawing? Why is it like this? They're like, mm, I like the new one better. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so, it's so weird how it works. So they did like the older song because mm. we were like, mm, we don't really feel, we're not feeling the new one. Mm. I was like, y'all should just like replay that mess. <laughs> but it was so funny, but it's like some things translate, some things don't. And the kids are Maybe like, Maybe they couldn't no. afford it. Beyonce is huge now. Like, That's what y'all. I said. That's what I said. I was like, they cannot afford Solange and Beyonce status. That's why they had to get some other they chick. They cannot afford to, to license sing. that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but now I was like, but it belongs to them. It's, I mean, this Proud Family was a, a Disney show. So I was like, well, why couldn't y'all just use the same even song? Even if it was a Disney show, that does not mean that the song belongs to Actually, them. Actually, the new the song one is called was just Proud licensed Family to Louder them. and Prouder. So maybe that's why. Because, you know, unless it was a work for hire that, you know, with intellectual property, you can make something from someone and they have the rights to use it for a certain period of time. Nerding out. But it doesn't mean that you're the owner of it. It means you're you have a license to use it for a certain period of time. I think you really should teach a class on IP. (laughs) You talk about you throw this all the time that I always have to remember you're talking about intellectual property. Because sometimes when you say IP, I'm like, which IP is she talking about? (laughs) It's like my IP address. (laughs) No. No, 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 no. I know <laughs> that was a bad joke too, but um, no, 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 no I, you're I right though. Like, you're right. Jokey. That could be it. <laughs> that could be the problem. And I was just like, get them back anyway. But it, it just doesn't translate sometimes. So yeah. I try to, I still try to get them to watch some of these old, really good shows from back in the day, and they just don't. Yeah, and so some things, things translate well, and some things don't. Like I'll go back and watch certain things, and I'm like, still good to me. And then I'll go like, back and oh watch something, and I'm like, no, this is like not that great. Have you ever seen The Last Dragon? American Dragon. No, that's a different show. Oh, no, yeah, that's different. I completely forgot about American Dragon. I love that Oh, show. you know what? There's so many dragon movies. I think I'm thinking of Double Dragon. There's a lot of dragon stuff. So that's <laughs> yeah. why I was like, which dragon? There's the Last Dragon? Is this like black kung fu movie? I don't think so. Girl, okay, you know what? When we're done recording, I think I want you to see it. Because the whole it, thing? Yeah. Oh. It's like, it was. it's not, it's, it's an old movie, so I doubt it's two hours. Come on, girl. We have to think about that. Let's talk about that off air. All right, all right, all right. But you guys, The Last Dragon is a classic. I mean, who's the master? Show enough. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't with that right now. I really can't. It's from The Last Dragon. Because they provided, like, so they had, like, all this jive talk plus kung fu stuff. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know if I would come call on. Jive talk. He Who's was like, the master show enough? <laughs> like, come yeah, on. Yeah, the guy's name was like show enough. He was oh like this. He was like this black shogun. Oh almost. my god! But they're like, I, I, th- I think they're probably in New York City. I can't. But it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing. His name was show enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, show enough. Okay, I'm laughing a little. Let's, you know what? Anyway, the whole point of this whole like tangent that we like we went to like five different tangents. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> was that I love the comedy genre. Mm. Like I do. I still love it. I love stand up com- comedy. Even though now you can get slapped for it. But <laughs> 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 oh I'm joking, God. I'm joking. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. Um but I love the comedy I love and I miss now. comedies into like it because this. of you and Lequa. <laughs> yeah, I miss comedies like this. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the Lost City was really entertaining. It was so and fun. Like, you're not gonna put this like next to Avengers and stuff, but this movie has its own merit. Yeah, that's and why hilarious. they have like a freaking category for different things, people. It doesn't always have to be some profound mm-hmm. existential thing. I Me, mean, I'm, I'm I'm telling you guys, at a certain point, me and her were just dying of laughter. We were oh just like, or like the audible ooh. gasp. You guys know that this is like, if oh, you haven't spoilers, seen the movie, please go so watch it before you come. Yeah, go, like, you go. can pause right now, go watch it, and then come back and exactly. then watch, listen to the rest but of it. But like, when I can't even remember what the what Brad Pitt's character's name was, I think his name was uh, John Trailer, tra- Trainer. John Train. That's right, because mm-hmm. that was the the funny thing because he was a trainer and well, it's he like, was like doing and Krav Maga and all this like Channing Tatum's character was his name Alan. Alan, yeah, yeah. His room is Alan, Alan. He's like, yeah, that's how I put people in my phone based off of what they do. So he's in my phone as John Trainer. Becky butt stuff. I know. <laughs> like, <laughs> so and it gross. Was so, but it turned out his last name was Trainer. Trainer. <laughs> and Brad Pitt did some did his thing, and then he was he not was in there for long. Mexi, but there. he was like, I mean, he the bulked rugged up. look is good on he him. He bulked. I don't know how long him and, and what's her name been divorced, but he bulked up. Okay. Yeah, the rugged was look lovely. looks good on Brad Pitt. But Honestly, when he, he got him. blown, uh, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> 
That thing took me for a surprise. I was like, I mean, Yo. he didn't get blown up. He got shot, but it was like his head pretty much exploded, exploded on Channing Tatum's <laughs> head. I know. My favorite scene is them because Channing Tatum wanted to also be so Brad Pitt's character was coming in to save her. Okay, so let's let's go back because I feel like I'm I'm talking and you're not gonna get it. So um, Sandra Bullock's character is a writer. She writes with like historical, like archaeological like, romance, romance no- novels, and then there's a man, Channing Tatum, who's her cover model, who's on all of her books, mm-hmm. and it's always like adventures between her, this Fabio s character, and then yeah. the girl. <laughs> And then she, it's kind of like her really thinking about these, yeah. really think about it. So she's just like, I don't want to deal with this guy. Cause she thinks like, she thinks the model character, Alan, who plays, I think his name is Dane, Dane or something. He, Dash. Dash. Dash is the character's <laughs> name. Dash and Lin, uh, Lenora or something. Was something the, love good. I think love good. Something love good. Yeah. Are the characters in the books she writes. Right. But the guy, Which, Alan, by the way, the, the latest book is called the lost city of, of D. D. And I was like, <laughs> come on now. And everybody's like, mm, for, what like, kind of D you talking about? Alan's like, Oh, I'm so, uh, it's so nice of you to name the book after my character. She was like, it, it's, it's not, not the lost city of dash. It's, 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 it's the name of the, the tribe. tribe and the tribe and the was tribe too long, too to hard expect. to pronounce. So <laughs> I, and then the host of like the, the book thing was like, is it the lost city of Dick? Yeah. he <laughs> was, uh, Shout out to Bo and Yang. Cause he's on Saturday night live right now. And I just like seeing him in this movie. I was like, go ahead, Bo and Yang. I liked it anyway, <laughs> but that was so funny. Yeah. It was hilarious. So, for some reason, um, the bad guy of the movie is uh, Harry Potter himself. Daniel Radcliffe. Grown up Dan- And his character's grown up Daniel name is Abigail, Abigail Fairfax. Fairfax. And she's like, Abigail? He's like, yeah, it's actually a unisex name. Like, Leslie, or I forgot what other you Beverly. Know, like, Beverly. Yeah, I'm like, I or know Ashley. that Leslie or Beverly or Ashley or Whitney are unisex? I have never heard of Abigail, Abigail being a <laughs> never. Unisex they, your parents was like mad when they made you or something, <laughs> or they wanted a girl, and you because Abigail Fairfax just sounds like something out of Jane Austen. You know what I mean? So I was like, oh, they carried you. Like <laughs> anyway, so you got a little. You got a little. Oh, I'm sorry, Daniel Radcliffe is so short. So I always be like, he little is. man. But I gotta say, another person who was looking sexy in the movie was Daniel Radcliffe. The beard looks good on yeah, him. Yeah, he needs to keep the beard all mm-hmm. the time. Makes him look like a man. So he wasn't bad looking. In the I movie. mean, he's just he a is little, a man. He is I mean, a man now. But. He's just short to me. So I'm just like, <laughs> oh Lord, you're so short. But he's just, so I just kept calling him little man because he was like complaining. He was basically the bad guy, but he was just like. I have all the money. You guys do all the shit for me. And, you know, I'm going to blow your head off if you don't, you know. He's, yeah. like, he's like very patronizing to this, the, uh, the workers that are all bigger than him doing the work, <laughs> you know. And I was just like, oh, my God, you're so annoying. And especially the way his entrance. He came and he snapped. So he kidnapped, he kidnaps, um, uh, he kidnaps uh, Sandra Bullock's character from uh, her event. Loretta. 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 Yeah. But because he thinks that she can really help him find the lost treasure, because she speaks about it in the newest book. And it but turns out she was like a, she I guess, well, her husband was a archaeologist, archaeologist mm-hmm. but she was like, I guess, in kind of in that field as well. But I guess whatever they were trying to do, I guess maybe they didn't get funding. So she started writing. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, he died. So yeah. I think she probably started writing after he died, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm, they never really go into why her husband died. But so now she has this guy. And then, I mean, anyway, Daniel Radcliffe thinks that only she can um, interpret the... Which was another funny part. She's like, you're the only one who's ever come close. She was like, well, I'm only, I'm the only person who tried. <laughs> <laughs> she kept trying to be like, yeah, I mean, this is not happening, right? Like, she's like, this is a, this is one of those like shows. Where are the cameras? Right? It was so hilarious. It wasn't, it didn't get real to me. Even I was looking at Daniel Radcliffe in his white suit, trying to be like all oh, nice and pleasant to her. And I'm like, you just kidnapped her though. He's like, oh God, didn't I tell you not to make it weird? I told you not to make it all weird. And I'm like, but you 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 sent these rough these roughnecks to come and snatch her like Asking what you mean is not gonna be weird someone else is already gonna be weird yeah. there's, right. not, oh there's no way to not make it weird <laughs> it's already weird you snatched me from where i was so it's already bad but my favorite part of, of for him uh because he's his character is terrible so <laughs> but my favorite part for him was that like when she was like 
I'm going to decline and do, I'm not going to do this. Cause he was like, really like, no, you're going to like be my saving grace for the mm-hmm. family. The family think he's terrible and didn't even let him, even though he's the well, oldest we son. We don't know if they thought he was terrible. He was just really, really salty about the fact that, that, that his brother, his got, brother the company, got the company and, and he, he got passed over because he's mm-hmm. the oldest. And I could see why he's on he talking about his butt kissing brother. <laughs> he's unhinged. That's why Mr. Abigail was unhinged. Okay. Ooh, that Abigail doesn't sound right. Mr. Abigail. That actually does sound very Victorian. Yeah. Mr. Abigail. <laughs> I like that. That was cute. Do it again. Mr. Abigail. Can I have some more, please? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so he, but the thing was when Sandra Bullock and Loretta, Sandra Bullock's character was like, um, no, I decline. I'm not, I'm not doing this. Like, No, thank you. I, so then he was just like, okay. Oh man, I wish she didn't say that. And then all of a sudden, it's like the ceiling, and the, the bay room, doors just like everything open up. just opens up. And a big jet. Mind <laughs> you, he has surrounded her with this long ass like t- square table full of cheese and crackers and stuff. <laughs> like he heard she likes was, cheese. It was. Uh, I'm sorry. It was an overkill on the cheese snacks. I was like. <laughs> All she need is like a small plate. Like you got the whole table full of cheese and snack. But the funny thing was, you see all this fruit and cheese. Like, Cause he has a plane to be like, well, just in case she didn't want to like go the right way, I'm just gonna kidnap her again the second time with chloroform. Just like knock her out, and she's gonna get on the plane by force. <laughs> but the whole thing's like the air from the plane and all the cheese and fruit just flying. By. <laughs> Whitney, it was so funny. It was. Speaking of, like, food, oh, did you notice, like, when they call oh. um, Brad Pitt's character um, Jack Trainer? Like, oh, it was Jack, not some... John. Yeah, Jack. It, it's like, is he chewing? <laughs> like, the entire time like, they eating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just kind of funny to me. That was, like, so My favorite part. part of this, Whitney, was the, not only that part, that was my favorite Abigail moment. Was mm. just You could just see him, and I'm glad they filmed it, like, um... They filmed it as a, a low angle because mm-hmm. it makes him look grand, even though he's small. Mm-hmm. So they filmed it at a low angle, and then it's just like, ha, 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 ha. then you're like, oh, this is definitely the bad guy. But just the him with the hair flying and all the cheese and fruit <laughs> flying all over the room. <laughs> I keep, I'm sorry, I'm just picturing it again now, and I just love it. But my real favorite scene was that. So Jack Trainer, so um. Alan was trying to get her back, right? Because Alan's like in love with her, actually. Alan is Channing Tatum's character, you guys. Yeah, Alan's in love with her, really. And he loves, he just loves the braininess of her. And she's just not into him because she's not, he's not like smart and stuff. So. And yeah, she said it like the, the book it. thing that she's like, she, like, she, she's a. There's a word that she used and I wish I caught you're, it. You're, you're attracted, attracted to, to intellect. Yeah, and I'm not going to lie. I have that problem. Mm. I really am. <laughs> I have that problem. But then sometimes I think being well-spoken might be intellect. It's not for some people. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, my God, you're dumb. Bye. <laughs> and it was so funny, some of the, like, because Dash is not, I mean, not, well, I mean, well, Alan. now we're, yeah, Alan, who plays Dash, mm-hmm. played by Channing Tatum. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> so it's like, you gotta, like, separate it. Oh, yeah, no. You gotta separate it. We're getting real Alan deep now. Alan doesn't, he can't, like, really say. He's not, <laughs> he's not, like, he's kind of dumb. He honestly. is, he is a little dumb. He's I'm like, sorry. you're like a human mummy. And then there's, like, they're in the Everybody's back of, like, a like, restaurant, and they're like, mummies, mummies are, are human. human. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> It's ridiculous. So he's trying to like be all brave and save her, but he know you can't do that. So he got Jack Trainer, and Jack Trainer is skilled. This is Brad Pitt's character, y'all. Mm-hmm. Jack Trainer is skilled. So he rolls up in there, but then he told him to stay in the car. He said, "Channing, to, well, Alan, he's like, you need to stay in the car." And of course, what he do? Alan locks himself out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, it's hilarious. And oh my god, this thing is like a clown car. It is it's so, so tiny. <laughs> Okay, so my favorite part was that, so you see Brad Pitt's character being sweet as a, just dropping dudes. Oh my God, all those over, were some of the best dudes. action sequences. The best sequences. action sequences ever was just when Brad Pitt. When he like jumped the fence and like drop kicked the dude. Yes. I was like, oh. and he jumped. <laughs> <laughs> he jumped some, see look, this is what comedies do for you. You just be laughing, we were just laughing the whole time remembering this film. It's just so a joy to laugh yeah at the ridiculousness of this film like <laughs> it was hilarious seeing brad pitt just slide 
And, and oh my god Chan Tatum headlock, kept like slapping people he wasn't even like punching people he was slapping people because well, the from, the funny thing is Brad, the Brad Pitt's character Jack was very trained so he would like put people in a headlock and be like go to sleep and they would drop but then you have Chan Tatum saying a character Alan coming in there slapping them and he's like, he's like why are you doing that they're already, already unconscious, unconscious. <laughs> it was so funny He's like, I just want to get up in there and do some stuff, stuff, but you can't do stuff though. You can't. <laughs> but they finally reached the girl. But of course, Alan doing too much, wanting to save her because he's in love with her. He's like, I want to say it. He messes oh. it up, so they didn't have enough time to cut all of her, uh, all of her um, restraints. What are those strings? Zip those ties. Zip ties. Because she zip ties in so many ways to the ta- to the chair. Because he was like, yeah, each limb Abigail was, basically- was like, you're gonna sit here and you're gonna solve this riddle off of this little piece I have, and then you're gonna find me my treasure, right? <laughs> and she's like, I can't really do this, but whatever. So she just stuck to the chair in her little sequin jumpsuit. <laughs> oh my god, that purple sequin. Jumpsuit. Oh my gosh, can you? <laughs> Imagine y'all going like, to the gym. How do they keep finding us? <laughs> it reminds me of, go I'm ahead. sorry to go back to the same thing that we've I've mentioned like three times mm-hmm. in separate like episodes, but it's like almost like the um, Idris Elba 007 thing. Mm. It's like, there he is. Yes, like, how do they keep finding him? <laughs> there he is because he's She's the got black a person in the whole white purple audience. purple sequin jumpsuit on. They That's found, how they keep finding I love how you. when they cut to the guys chasing her, he was like, they were tracking her. And you could just see the sequins in the water. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to find this. They're going to find her. Like, <laughs> <you're so nice. laughs> but my, 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 I, I keep trying to like set this up with me. But my favorite scene was like they did not have enough time to cut all her zip ties, mm-hmm. so they literally had to pick up the chair because they started shooting. They literally had to pick up, pick, put her in a wheelbarrow <laughs> and escape. <laughs> oh my god! So, so you just see them both like pushing the wheelbarrow, and she's in the chair. No, it, it, Jack is pushing the wheelbarrow for some reason. Alan is by. holding one one of her feet. And I'm like, why are you holding her leg? There is no need for you to hold her leg. I guess you just felt like you needed to be useful. I'm like, why? Why? It was hilarious. I could not stop laughing at just the image of all of them. She's stuck to the chair with one leg out that he's holding for like no reason. No reason. You got like one heel broken. It's so funny. But like for me. The funniest Ooh, part was like I when <laughs> when Alice like pushes pushes her into the car like this tiny oh clown God. car and she doesn't fit all the way so he doesn't he can't close the door and on it's her because foot. she's still stuck to the chair yeah though. she's still stuck in the chair and, and so then, he's driving she, you around the mountain when, when, you gotta mention Jack was just shot in the head yeah so, so now Jack they're like trying, dead. they thought they were good and I'm not gonna lie Jack was trying to steal him. <laughs> Steal her from from Alan, and Alan yeah. was like, "What you trying to do to my girl?" But Jack <laughs> got shot, and, and Alan was like, "Well, I gotta take over now." So he stuffed her in the car. Yeah, Go ahead with the rest. yeah, but he can't close the the back door because on her foot because her the chair, the foot still sticking out. It's like the door won't close. She's like, "This is not gonna happen." <laughs> he, oh, oh my god, that reminds me of another funny part. He's like, "Kegel it, kegel it." She was like, "I don't think you know what kegel <laughs> means." <laughs> That is not going to help us get my foot into this so car. Dumb. It was so dumb. So then he, like, they're shooting at them still. So he finally gets in the car and drives off. And they're, like, driving on the side of a mountain. So there's, like, a cliff drop off. And oh he, like, God. turns the car. And he, like, just, like, spin. Like, I mean, that Guys, literally spin. But, like, the hilarious. car is on the edge of the cliff. And he's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's, like, hanging off the edge. And then he looks back. He was like, that was close. And there's nothing yes. in the back. So you're like, oh, my God. Did he just, like, she throw her out on the, mm-hmm. the side of the mountain? We all couldn't find it. Nobody could find it for her. But she ended up rolling out. <laughs> <laughs> and she's still attached to the chair, y'all. Like, this whole time. Ooh, oh my that, God. to me, was so funny. When you're like, when the back seat was empty, Ooh. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. It was hilarious. Like, Oh, this movie made me laugh so bad. Like, and his, uh, you... his his water allergies, like, I don't react well to water. And then, like, they're building the fire. Yeah, they had she's to like, escape. she's like, okay, I gotta find something to start a fire with. She's like, oh, 
here's some oil right here. It's mm-hmm. like eucalyptus oil. We'll just and she squirts it into the fire. Like she she's pours like, like all of it out. I was yeah, like, what the like, heck? Oh, this is great. And she's like, oh my god, your back looks so bad. He's like, yeah, that I, I, when I said I don't react well to water, this is what happens. She's like, well, is there anything you have that you can put? Oh, he's like. You well, just poured yeah, it into the fire. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> she just took his oil that he used for his eczema. When water hits him, he gets eczema. It's really bad. It was so fun. Then she started taking the face mask and putting it on his back. Oh, my God. So much stuff. Like, they were just an unlikely pairing. But he was just in love with her. It was still nice. The romance part of it was really nice. Because <clears throat> he helped her also to um to realize that because she was also like a recluse kind of person mm-hmm. because she was just kind of sad, About still grieving husband. of mm-hmm. her husband for years. And they were all like and concerned. She didn't really like come out of her house. Mm-hmm. They were all concerned. They like she had to like force her to do these book tours and stuff. Um, so they were all, well, Divine something Joy played the Beth, um, her, um, her publisher. Beth was working it. She was really like, I'm going to get these people she out. She was. Oh, my God. That's black woman for you. She, <laughs> Stacey Abram did. I'm I'll telling you. I'll go <laughs> if I have to go by myself. I don't know the song, Whitney. Oh, it's it's like a it's a it Sounds black, like a Negro spiritual. It, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Like, I think it, it, yeah, it's something we see in church sometimes. But it's like a, it's like the a country. The only one I like is Wade in the Water. Wait in the water, children, wait in the water. God's going to trouble the water. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get like bass with your voice. I know, like, right? Oh, my God. The first time I ever heard that song was in elementary school. My teacher did like a, a black uh, history month, like dinner, lunch thing. And of course, me being African from African parents, I didn't have much knowledge of all this stuff, so mm-hmm. she was nice enough to let me bring African food to the thing mm-hmm. and share my culture with the class. But then she brought her father in to sing that song, and I was so like, this is me at 10 years old. His voice was so deep. I was in love with his voice. <laughs> I was just like, oh, my God. He just, his voice, it was so deep. I can't even get as deep as he did. Yeah. That's why I love bass. You know another one I just love really bass love? It doesn't have anything to do with bass, <laughs> but I love the actual, like, Negro anthem. Oh, yeah. Sing Lift every voice. A yeah. song. We're <laughs> supposed to know the words. Please Amanda Seals will be pissed with us. Nobody cut up our black card, please. <laughs> because if you watch her special on Netflix, you should watch her special on um, said Netflix. Who? Um, HBO. Amanda Seals. Amanda Seals. Okay. She I'll plays Tiffany that. on Insecure. And she's like a very outspoken black person, like for black culture, everything. She's um, Amanda Seals. Yeah, I just, her name's Amanda Seals. Um, but she would like revoke our black card because on her HBO special, she had everybody singing that song. She's like, "You guys know you know the words," and everybody did. And I was like, "Damn it, I don't know all the words. I don't know all the words. My either. black card's gonna get taken so many times, y'all. So many times. I was like, my I know black t- card is in the. Like, I know the two. Is in the trouble I know of getting some revoked. Of the words. I know sing a song. I know like sing a song. And I know it's Debbie full of the <laughs> something of something of something. Oh, excuse me. Oh my God. Anyway, <clears throat> okay, back to the lawsuit. Well, we are terrible. We keep going off topic. Ah, uh, we're sorry, you guys. But Bolo's joining me this time. It's usually me getting this I know, off topic. I know. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying <laughs> the combo where the combo is going. Okay. So back to Lost City. So just to po- talk about some real interesting parts of it, like that part was what we were talking about. Um. <laughs> Wow, what were we talking about? What's <laughs> my train of um, Oh, yeah, the part that she was sad. So the reason, the romance part, the romance part of it was very nice because mm-hmm. you still, you haven't, they, like, she was, of course, judging a book by its cover. Yeah. Which was funny because he threw that in her face because she's an author, and she's like, man, I really thought, like, you of all people wouldn't judge a book by its cover because she just assumed that, he was a dumb, dull person. Like, even though he had ideas for how they could get out of a situation, mm-hmm. she just was not listening to him. She's like, let me think. Let me think. <laughs> it was, like, so messed and up. And honestly, he, he was a little dumb. He but was. It's, but it's like, I feel like he wasn't, like, He had a good a idea, dumb, though. Dumb, I feel like he's, like, one of those people who's just, mm. Yeah. Stuff just goes, yeah. Okay, no, he was a little dumb. He just didn't know a lot of stuff. 
he didn't know a lot of stuff, but he wasn't like like dumb, dumb, dumb. Yeah. Where he just like, <laughs> just damn dumb. you, dumb. <laughs> yeah, you know where you have to dumb, say dumb, like that. Dumb, but just dumb. Yeah. <laughs> he just don't know a lot. She's very more well-educated and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. So and she threw big words at him, and he was like, in Latin and stuff. My favorite part for him, for their coupling, mm-hmm. was like, he learned like a Latin word to say to her at the end when they were like finally together and stuff when they got saved and everything. Mm-hmm. But then at the same time, she replied with another Latin thing and then he didn't know what to say next. <laughs> he was like, I only want to He was like, I'm just like, he just, he just said some gibberish. That's what I do when I don't know some songs. <laughs> I just say some gibberish. I'm just like, right? 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 So he did that, and I just thought it was so cute because it wasn't about that. At this point, she had realized she wasn't looking at how, like, he, that man had a heart of gold. Like, yeah, he, he was the cared. only one coming to save her ass. You he know what cared I mean? so much about her. And she had such a, he, like, helped her to not have such a jaded <laughs> view of her work. Because he's like, because, like, she thought that he just, like, loved this thing, this stuff all the time he's she like when i did it first, first yeah she thought it like i just to piggyback off what you just said she thought he was only in it because of the adoring fans are love loving him and like the the like the vain the vanity of it because yeah. he's like I dash mean, the sexy like he Fabio was man. in it for the loving fans but not from a like you not said from not a from van- a vain point he was like when i first was doing this he was like i was embarrassed to be his cover model. I didn't talk to my friends for months because mm-hmm. I thought that they would find out. He was like, but then this woman came up to me and she was like, Dash. And I could see how happy it made her. And he was mm-hmm. like, well, if I make someone that happy, how can I be embarrassed about this? Exactly. And he just said, like, it was like some profound stuff. He said some really profound things. He was like, things. and you can't put your work down because your work makes so many people happy mm-hmm. but she was mad because at the at the beginning when they did the com- when they did the, <laughs> the, the the press show it was hilarious because she's like no don't bring dash here because he embarrasses me and i don't want to see and no one's here for me <laughs> they only here for him and i'm not gonna lie they based were. on the audience it looked like it was how <laughs> you have three questions and all of them are like can somebody pull off dash's shirt like <laughs> It was hilarious, and then they got into a fight or whatever, and then his wig came off. <laughs> his Fabio wig came off. And then, it, actually, it made me think of romance novels because growing up, my mom had a ton of them. Mm. She was such a voracious reader when it came to romance novels. Mm-hmm. I don't even know why, but my mom absolutely loved romance novels. I remember she had a ton of them. She got rid of them, and I don't know why, but she did get rid of them. Safe space, she, maybe? I don't know. We have we have space, so maybe she's using her library membership to do ebooks. No, she had her own books. Like she bought them. She had her own. I remember I constantly saw them. There were tons of them in the house, and I always looked at them, and they were never books I wanted to read because mm-hmm. they were always again like a Fabio s kind of scenario or like something off of Hallmark where you just like romance novels. Either the League was really into romance. Yeah, novels. I know she is. But I've read a couple, and I can't remember who the author's name was. Who's they're kind of like similar ones, mm-hmm. but um, those the are good. Bridgerton ones are romance novels, actually. The okay, Bridgerton series. But yeah, like the th- these are like tra- almost like traditional romance. And I was like, this is actually good. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I would not like seek out, yeah, to read a romance novel. But it depends. For me, sometimes it's like I can do regular action. Like I could do regular life stories where it's not like sci-fi fans. It's just like regular life. I can do that. Well, I there's can a romance do it. End. I don't usually seek it out. Mm-hmm. I can do it. It's usually because I've seen it somewhere else, or maybe I've seen like a TV or movie adaptation. I'm like, I'm gonna go check out this book, and I'm like, oh, this is good. Yeah, so most of the African books I've been buying lately have been like that. Mm. They're like situational. Mm-hmm. And then just, I like to see my culture reflected in the books. Nice. So I'm very happy nice. about that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <clears throat> the Children of Blood and Bone are the, like, the first like African like, that's like sci-fi fantasy that I love. Mm. Um, anyway, but going back to her thing was that I don't know why as a writer that she was not enjoying, um, <coughs> excuse me, mm-hmm. that she was not enjoying her work. I, that part kind of struck me because I was just like, you write so many of these books. So you, wh- what is it? What's going on that you're like? I think not- she was tired of like just like the same characters. Because you notice like at the end, she was like making these this book series like with her <laughs> and um, Alan rather mm-hmm. than Dash and whatever the other character's name was. So maybe she just needed to pivot. And she was like, 
I need to burn it all down. Because, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes people get pigeonholed into a certain thing, just mm-hmm. like actors get pigeonholed into certain roles. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I can do more than just this. Mm-hmm. I need you to see that I can, you know, be a more varied actor than just this one type of role. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting point. But I just couldn't get, like, I was like, if I'm a writer and I write these books, I would love my own stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to love it. Like, and I guess, I guess that's why she blew up her own book tour. She's like, I don't love it anymore, so I'm just going to blow it up so I don't have to write it. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. You're probably right with me. Um, other points for this movie. Um, it had a lot of action scenes, like jungle scenes, mm-hmm. you know, like just them trying to get through the jungle. Oh, my God. Okay, so for all of us ladies who love Magic Mike, <laughs> this movie, you're going to get to see Shannon Tatum's yes, <laughs> Nice, taut. Uh, yes, that it is. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's exactly what you were hoping it was going to be. It was just <laughs> wonderful. <clears throat> so when the leeches were coming off, you're just like the pants came off and she got a peek seek. I'm just saying she got it from the front and the back. And I was like, why can't I be her? Anyway. <laughs> but so that part was like enjoyable for me because mm. I love Magic Mike. I really did. So <laughs> I just like watching him. I still haven't seen the second one. I'm just saying, like me, I would go to see male dance strippers, but I would never, like, I don't care to go see women strippers. Because, you know, like, to me, like, you know, I have friends that they're, they're like, yeah, they're girls and they go to see female strippers. And I'm just like, why? I don't go to see female strippers, but I do see burlesque shows. I mm-hmm. think they're cool. It's an like, interesting kind of almost like burlesque, female I can understand. empowerment. But unless yeah, I can understand. I wouldn't see, but, to be honest, I wouldn't really be that interested in, in a strip show, male or female. Oh, my God. But I like, the, yes. I like the kind of <coughs> empowerment of, like, burlesque shows. Mm, okay. What is the empowerment you're talking about? I feel like it's not, it's, it's about them feeling beautiful and awesome. And, you mean the empowerment the girls feel? Yes. Oh, Okay. Because I was like, how does this, them stripping off in front of everybody give them power? Mm. Yeah, because I feel like it's something that they chose because they feel powerful and beautiful and just, like, awesome doing it rather than, I need this money to put myself through college. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe they do, I'm but make still. make a clap for these $100 bills, you know? <laughs> Shake it for a dollar, a five, five or ten. ten. What, what you doing for a Benjamin? Benjamin. <laughs> 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 no, that was the line. <laughs> I was talking about the yin yang twins, and you just went, "Well, what you doing for a Benjamin?" I was like, "Dang, <laughs> that was the line." Misheard lyrics, y'all. See. <laughs> anyway, oh man, that's hilarious. But um, that was a good part. But I would go. You Anybody know who knows me knows I would go to the male strippers. Yes. I mean, I, I think I would go. It's not something I would seek out. Dancers. I wouldn't say no to it, but it's not something that it was Remember like... I tried to do exotic painting where you could paint naked men? Or you could paint you them that? naked. Where, when did you try that? No, remember I was trying to get all of you to go with me? Oh, I would have gone with you. <laughs> I don't know. Well, the pandemic came along and then oh, I yeah, thought yeah, it was unsafe. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, why? It's just some dicks going around. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> You're really just painting with, your, with a bunch of other girls and maybe some men. I don't know if they're into that. But um, maybe, well, well, maybe we'll have to go and it's up and running again. I don't know. <laughs> we'll when see. it's up. <laughs> <laughs> Whitney, <Sorry>. you nasty. <laughs> Sorry. She's always but in the gutter, guys. Anyway. Not me. Not me, oh. not me. <laughs> Another funny part at this time for Daniel Radcliffe's character, Abigail. Abigail. Was like at the very end of the movie. When oh my like, gosh. Little, when Beth comes and saves. a little bitch ass for that. Um, <laughs> And saves Alan and uh, Loretta. Mm -hmm. And so they're on the boat, but they've like picked up Abigail because Mm -hmm. he's pretended like he was in trouble or whatnot. And not like he was the one who kidnapped everyone. Mm -hmm. So they're like, they get on the boat. It's like, he's the one who kicked at me. And and so then they turn around and he runs to the back of the boat. (laughs) And it's up. And, and Oscar, Oscar from like, from from um Office Guys, he's in the movie. Yeah, he he's tackles cool. him. He was like, "What were you doing? It's a boat. Where were you gonna go?" <laughs> Which was funny. I'm like, "Yeah, where is he trying to go?" And I just realized something. Oscar had another really funny part in the proposal. He was in that film what? where you know the one doing the dancing and stuff. The Spanish guy that was like stripping or something. Oh. I just realized that was him. <laughs> And then she gave him another role in this to do something crazy. <laughs> so I guess him and Sandra Bullock are tight. <laughs> uh, I, remember but I the, loved oh, him in that. 
that was fun. that reminds me of like the the Beth and Oscar scene. Where he's Where like, I, I love steak too, and she's like, what? He's like, I heard you mention that you love steak. I love steak too. And she was like, I said there are lives at stake. Steak. I know, and you know what's so funny? The whole time I was like, where is he going with this steak? And I just realized that she said that. I didn't even think about it. And I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> That's what she said. I was like, she did say there were lives at stake. And I was like, he's talking about steak food. And I was like, <laughs> Oscar, let's just not. But he was supposed to be like a local of that area. And yeah. Stuff. Um, Spanish speaking area. He, he was like trying. I feel like he was trying to get it back. Mm-hmm. And he was, and she he, she was not having it. She made sure at the end. She's like, okay, you are gonna be around, but you we are platonic friends. He's like, I don't like, know I what like, it means, but I it like sounds the nice. Way that sounds. I was like, you don't got it. <laughs> you dude. just you got, got friend it. zones, dude. I, know. I was like, you ain't getting no Beth cookies, okay? You ain't getting no <laughs> Beth cookies. <clears throat> but I love how Beth came to say the day. Like again, a black woman. She Stacey Abrams it. Only she came with the reinforcement. Because I was like, Alan, you just brought this one dude. She had brought a whole boat and some police. That's what you're supposed to do. (laughs) Had they been black. You know what I mean? (laughs) Thank God she was black. Because I was like, why aren't you thinking of authorities right now? Like, why would you just bring this one dude to go rescue her? Write it down. She brought the authorities from, I guess, the other end of the island. Because the authorities, when, when. Yeah. um, Crap. What is Sandra character's name? The American ones were like, this is above our pay grade. You're going to have to call the feds. And she was like, oh, no. Oh, uh, Loretta. I can never remember her character's name in this movie. So, like, when Loretta and Alan, like, when they escape, they do get to a town, and they tell the authorities. But the authorities are in his pocket because he owns half the island. And I was like, why would you not maybe think that since he owns half the mm-hmm. island that probably the police are in his pocket? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, and then he spent all that money. What I liked was that... Um, <clears throat> His whole, what I liked was the moral, like the end, was like, it was really about Loretta finding love and joy for life again, Mm. and like finally finishing her grieving process. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's what it was, like she had to do this grieving, it was a comedy, but she was still in grief over her husband, husband, because it's like life depressed her, Mm -hmm. like she just didn't find any joy anymore, Mm -hmm. she was just like autopiloting her life. And so she was able to, once she found out what the real source, because she actually did find, um, so he really had a piece Mm -hmm. of ancient uh, hieroglyphics. or I can't call it hieroglyphics because that's only for. um, They were pictographic. Pictographic um, language. Yeah. Yeah. So for this ancient culture. Mm -hmm. Um, And so he really had a piece. Abigail had a piece. And she was trying to uh, like figure out whether or not this was real or not because I think it was something her and her husband really did look for. Mm-hmm. They just never completed it. So they once never, she figured they out, never found the city. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so and the whole reason out, that Abigail found the city was because the volcano, like I guess, I think he said it erupted mm-hmm. and it caused the. No, I thought it's because somebody showed them. No, because he was like he said that that the part of the city, just like the the tip of it, was like revealed when the volcano erupted, and it caused something to like, I don't know, something to lower, mm. so that part of it like became visible. Okay, I didn't. I'm not gonna lie, I did not realize how they find the exact location, but I thought he. Oh, you're saying Dan? You're you're saying um Abigail Fa- Fairfax? Mm-hmm. They figured out where it was. Okay. Well, they like, only found it because of the volcano, because the vol- you know, the entire city was like buried. Because she under said ash. it was a sinkhole. And so I was like the sinkhole. Mm-hmm. So I was like, where are they gonna sink into? So I guess that place was sunken down. So Yeah, I guess was, where Julian fell off into mm, the abyss know, <laughs> was so part sad of the sinkhole. For him, even though he was well, he was a henchman. I wasn't that sad for him. Like the, <laughs> Well, I don't know if the guy was black or I don't know. But the other guy was like, Yeah, I would have felt sad for him, but I don't know. Julian Julian seemed, was annoying, yeah, yeah. And very particularly cold. Mm-hmm. Um but he was funny in certain parts because he was just stupid. <laughs> you know those big henchmen that are just dumb, that's what he was. Um, but anyway, what I liked was that once they actually reached the location of the treasure, that he was just trying to find this like red diamond, like tiara or crown or something. Headdress of Headdress, crown of fire. Crown of fire is what it was yeah. called. So that was the whole point because he wanted to prove himself that he was good. He, he, you know, he has a big chip on it. Napoleon complex is really was afflicting that guy. So he just wanted to prove himself and achieve things and. It was just all wrong for him, and he spent all his money doing that, and it was really bad because at the end of it, if he they found out that it really wasn't like diamonds, it was just red seashells, mm-hmm. and that it was really a place about love, 
It was about the love story, which was a love story. Cool love story. It was beautiful. Talking about how the um, the queen's headdress it was from when the king proposed to her, because every day for mm-hmm. like 365 mm-hmm. days or something, he brought her a shell, mm-hmm. and like after a year, she accepted his proposal, mm-hmm. and they made like a yeah, headdress out of those I shells. Know, it was so beautiful. It was, and I just thought it was so nice. And then you found out that they were like the treasure was it that. She was she died holding him. That was her treasure because she loved her husband, mm-hmm. and it was just so nice. The story was beautiful and deep, and I just like oh my god. And so she realized it, and I feel like that helped her. Plus, oh, it spending did. that time she with Alan up, for real too. She helped left her, her see. ring in there. In that the was tomb. a cheap looking ring. I was like, this is not your wedding ring. <laughs> I mean, I know he's an archaeologist, but dang, like it could be a little thicker. It looked like a a jump ring on a keychain. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> It, I looked it, at that and I was like, honestly, somebody in the prop department did I, not okay. think. <laughs> I didn't like give it a whole lot of thought, but I did kind of look at it and think like, this is really, a really barely there ring. Yeah. <laughs> it looked like, again, it looked like a jump ring on a, on a keychain. That's what it looked like. She could just take it off the keychain. I have rings on right now that are thicker than that ring. <laughs> I was like, that is not your wedding ring. Anyway, they threw it in there. First of all, they he locked them in because he was pissed off that there really was no treasure. He locked them in the tomb. Well, a lot. Alan and um, not, Loretta. Not exactly locked. It was like one of those big stone tombs. So, like, you had, like, yeah, a big stone. Yeah, but still, like, it was really, like, not cool. It wasn't the, cool. The volcano was erupting all around them. Why the heck would you, like, it's not their fault that you thought that oh, there was a treasure and there he wasn't. Don't, he don't care. <laughs> I know. He was crazy. But I was just like, so it was really messed up that he didn't care that. And even one of his henchmen, the only one left, was like, I can't lock, I can't like seal them in this wooden, this stone thing. They're going to die. He's like, I don't give a, you know, and I was like, wow, like it makes no sense. You're angry about this thing, but it's not their fault that history didn't work out the way you want it to. They weren't there when, you know, this stuff was going on (laughs) and it's not your, it's not, it's not their fault that, you know, the story didn't play out the way there wasn't a real treasure that in the way you thought of. Mm. So I was just like, you were unreasonable, but he was already unhinged. So it makes sense. He's the villain. But I was just like, so I, I was happy that one of the henchmen, like, gave them the crowbar at the end so they could get out. Mm-hmm. And then the, he just was so sad. But I like that that, hench, that same henchman was just, like, just dipped on him. He was <laughs> like, where are you going? My boat. I need a boat. He's like, uh-uh. The island's going to eat you now. And I was like, <laughs> ah, even your henchman got away from you. <laughs> so Daddy Reckless character was looking real, like, like, real nasty, real bad at the end. And I was like... The whole him running on a boat was so <laughs> stupid. It was like, where are you going to run to? The ocean? Like, you on the boat. Who can I run to? Who can I run to? <laughs> that one doesn't apply, but you're right. <laughs> but anyway, this movie was uh, so hilarious. Uh, it had some wonderful moments. It's, I just thought it was enjoyable. Like, I'm really, yeah. like, praising the comedy gods and stuff right now for making it and whoever wrote it and who was involved because it's just really enjoyable, funny. It was. It was super I enjoyable. I liked it. It's just a nice time. Like, yeah. And sometimes you just need that. You, that. Not everything has to be epic and dark and slashery and, like, <laughs> you know, oh, my God, killing and everything because I feel like there's so much of that going on that people forget to like and enjoy just a comedy. They're like, yeah. And you even think about it. Some people are like, I wouldn't pay for that. They would, like, only pay to go to the theater for, like, the big movies. I only pay for trauma. <laughs> Thank you. I only play for trauma and drama, apparently. You know, so I'm just like, these movies like nice these rhyme. are still... Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Rhyming is what I do best. I'm still working on your little rap. Ah, okay, okay. I forgot the parts I made up. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Wait. You know what? Just go back and listen to the last episode. No tagline wit. No tagline wit. Always in her techie level, she can get it lit. Hey, keep it lit. Hey, hey. keep it lit. Hey. Coming at you with some quick lines. It's legit. Hey. <laughs> I was trying to talk about how you sing all the time <laughs> and they come at you like a blitz or something. <laughs> I remember that, but we'll work on it. <clears throat> anyway, right. so are we ready for our rating, Whitney? Yes, yeah, do All right, it. we've talked enough and laughed enough. <laughs> all right, you go first. I would give this eight <laughs> glasses. Oh, my God. Me too. What? Yay. <laughs> Synergizing, girl. All right. So we give the Lost City of D. I'm joking. Up. It's just the Lost <laughs> City. That's the book. I wish I could go to the Lost City of D. Wow. 
Like, oh my. And the, you know the D I'm talking about. I Actually, talking do you about. know that there is a place in South Korea, there's like a park where it's just full of penises. Huh. Did you know that? I did not know. <laughs> oh my God. I'm, I'm not kidding you. This is a real place. There's like all these statues. The penises are like all over the place. <laughs> it's very intriguing. <laughs> I mean, honestly, there's penises all over the place in the world anyway. Well, I mean, Washington people, Monument. Yeah. Oh my God, no. <laughs> not like that. Like these are like legit penises. They're like, they're made to look like them. And I'm, I'm going to, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I'm going to get you the name. Just... It's like a penis island. But I like the story behind why that place was set up what? like I, it was okay. a, the, the story behind <laughs> okay. why they because the people built it not to be like perverted although it does sound like it is perverted <laughs> but the people built it because they were a fisherman community this is the story behind it in south korea it was appreciate your penis day no it wasn't <laughs> <laughs> penis appreciation. the story behind it was that there was um there was a people fishing right there mm-hmm. was a fisherman fishing community and then all of a sudden, there was there's a like this this god or something that was like unhappy mm-hmm. and came up and then they couldn't fish anymore mm-hmm. and all of them were like you know the the community was starving or something and they did not know what else to do to appease mm-hmm. the um the god Penis or something god. but then somebody like ended up peeing in the water and <laughs> I feel like I'm telling this wrong. somebody ended up peeing in the water. Yeah, just Wikipedia this. Like, I'm gonna. <laughs> somebody ended up peeing in the water, and then something happened to the creature. I guess mm-hmm. the creature died or whatever. And so they assumed that whatever the gods or whatever of that water, because then they were, everything was cleared and mm-hmm. they could fish again. And they assumed that it was looking at the penis because the person had to show it to pee. Mm-hmm. That that cleared the way. So then they built all these things to the penis in that area. <laughs> I just think the story is hilarious. I had no idea how folklore. you were going to get to there from like the, the fishing story. The folklore wow. part of it is like, it makes sense. Cause you know, I must, I love, I'm a student of folklore. The folkloric stuff makes sense, but it's just like, they made a whole, like they built in this community. This uh, penises are just everywhere and every kind of thing. Okay. Fish ones, every. Okay, I'm sounding Wait, like I'm fish I'm, penises. Yes. Okay. You know what? I'm just gonna like find. I'm gonna find this information, post it, so y'all not think I'm like a pervert or something. Although I'm sounding like Too it. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real place, though. I promise you guys. I really. Do. Anyway, Whitney, just you talk. I'm uh, well, I, would, I, I should was, not have brought this up. I was just gonna close this out. <laughs> I guess we'll close out on Penis Island. <laughs> Okay, wait. Let me get um. Let me get the name of the um the place. So you, there's a real Korean name to it. Oh my god, this is terrible. Why did I bring this up? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> oh my god, I, don't know. I have maybe you no should just cut this out with me. No, it's staying <laughs> See, in there. You don't help me at all. Like. Come on. I don't cut my stuff out either. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Wait, this is staying. No, people must know about Penis Island. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We, I, I'm you know what? Team. You guys, we're going to put it in the show notes. All right? Like. They must know the name. Okay. All right. Well, I guess I'll do okay, some Okay. So, it's called Hei Dang Park. Hei Dang Park. Hei Dang Park. There you go, people. For any of you who wanted to go visit Penis Island. You see? <laughs> <laughs> you look at that picture. They, it's everywhere. Wow. It's everywhere. Statues, cannons. Bo will put it in the show look notes, you this. guys, look so you guys can go and look at it. It's not me. Oh, I didn't do it. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, my mommy will listen to this. <laughs> It's on you, girl. Oh, no, she won't listen to this. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. We're going to go out on that note. Y'all have an awesome, blurdy, blurdy day and enjoy this weather. Indeed. We will see you back again in May. In May. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Bye, what? guys. And watch, go watch Lost City. It's really nice. Yeah, check it out, you guys. Eight glasses all around. Eight glasses. Woohoo. Blurting out. Blurt out. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to our podcast. Please subscribe to our show on whatever podcast listening app you use and share the show with other blurred and non blurred family and friends. And if you like our episode, please rate and review us on iTunes. The intro and outro music is Twilight by Caption. You can find them on SoundCloud, the username Caption, spelled C A P S H U N. 
show notes are by Bola Hansen, and the audio engineering is by Whitney Booker. And you can contact us by email at blurredtalkbw at gmail.com. And also, don't forget to get social, you guys. You can find us on our social media at Instagram and Twitter with our at handle being at blurredtalkbw. And we've got our individual things going on too, y'all. So you can find me, your Blurred Fashionista, on Instagram and Twitter at Bola Story B. That's B with two E's like the insect. And I've got my own personal YouTube channel, just Bola Sade. That's B-O-L-A-S-H-A-D-E. D's and dog, E is an elephant. And this is Whitney. You can find me at my company, Luminavi Studios. The email address is wit at luminavi.com. That's W-H-I-T at L-U-M-E-N-A-V-I.com. You can also find me on Twitter at Luminavi Studios. 